Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lessons 99 to 104 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is the ultimate challenge and the end of this course, which I call All Your Ducks in a Row. This is the Chef's Apprentice final exam. If you've cooked your way through this course, by now you're quite accomplished in the kitchen, and you will be ready for this impressive presentation. Actually, it's several separate preparations, which bring together many of the techniques you've learned. When you can cook all your ducks in a row, all your ducks will be in a row in more ways than one, especially as a cook. The first time I made these preparations, I made everything in one day. I don't recommend doing this unless you want to pull your hair out soon before your guests arrive. Instead, I recommend making the duck stock and the pasta, and maybe even the consomme, in advance, preferably on two or three different days so you can skim the fat from the duck stock the day after you make it. You will prepare the following five small courses. Duck confit sous vide with diced apples. Shirred duck egg with truffle and smoked duck breast. Duck consomme with foie gras and fig wontons. Duck prosciutto and truffle ravioli with peas, butter, and truffle oil. Pan seared duck breast with duck demi-glace and charred broccoli flowers. You will need two whole ducks plus one extra breast. Break down the ducks as shown in my bonus lesson, Breaking Down a Duck. You could prepare these five dishes on five separate nights, or you could prepare them all in one day for service the same night as five small courses. That would be the most challenging and the most impressive way to do it, and it will take some planning. But once you do it, you'll prove your well-earned cooking chops to your guests, and more importantly, to yourself. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients for all your ducks in a row. First, we'll talk about the ingredients that we need for the duck confit preparation. You'll need two duck legs and thighs, the fattier the better. Now, I'm not showing them to you because I already have them in the sous vide device. You, what you want to do is uh, season them with salt and pepper and then seal them in a vacuum bag with a half a cup of cold solidified duck fat and put it in the fridge overnight. Also, you want to have some thyme sprigs in that bag. Uh, now, um, uh, if you're going to do it in two bags, just put uh, one duck leg in each bag and then put a quarter of a cup of the uh, duck fat in each bag and then uh, a couple of sprigs of thyme. You can seal those up, put them in the fridge overnight. Uh, I've got the duck fat here. You're going to need about a half a cup of solidified duck fat. You're also going to need to have one apple uh, that's been peeled and cored and cut into a quarter inch dice. Now, if you do this a la minute, you don't have to toss it in lemon juice because if you're going to use it right away, then you won't have to worry about it turning brown. But if you're going to do it any time in advance, uh, use either a Granny Smith apple, which uh, will turn brown more slowly, or I'm, I'm not using a Granny Smith, and if I do it in advance, I'm going to toss that quarter inch dice in lemon juice, okay? And then you'll need to have uh, some red peppercorns in a pepper grinder. Uh, one batch of killer cherry sauce. I have a separate uh, lesson in my sauces to, die, sauces to Die For series on making the killer cherry sauce. Uh, so you need one batch of that. You're not going to need very much, but uh, it doesn't make sense to make more than a, uh, less than a full batch. Then you'll need to have enough arugula to make a small bed of arugula under each one of the uh, for each one of the dishes. And on top of that, you're going to mount uh, the um, the duck confit. Okay, those are all the ingredients that we need for the duck confit preparation in all your ducks in a row. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the ingredients for the other preparations. Okay, now let's talk about the ingredients that we need for the shirred duck eggs and smoked duck. All right now, you're going to need to have eight duck eggs. Now, duck eggs are bigger than chicken eggs, okay? So I have them in this chicken egg carton, which can't close the top because they're bigger than chicken eggs. And you'll need, so you'll need eight of those. If you're making for six people, uh, so make, you'll have one for each person and then two uh, in case anything goes wrong. All right. Then you're going to need to have about two tablespoons of uh, melted clarified butter. I have more than that in here because we're going to need some for a couple different preparations. I've just got it all in the same one and we're going to uh, kind of eyeball it when we go to use uh, the uh, clarified butter. So that has to be melted, okay? And I have a separate lesson, bonus lesson, on making clarified butter. Uh, then we'll need to have uh, some, uh, either a fresh truffle. Now, if you can't get a fresh truffle or you don't want to buy a fresh truffle, uh, then uh, you could use some substitute, like truffle slices. Now, this is truffle carpaccio uh, made by a company called Borgo de Medici. I've used this before. Uh, they smell pretty good. They're about as close 
they're, they're pretty close. Well, mm, you're never going to get really close to a fresh truffle from anything that comes out of a jar. But um, these are a decent substitute for these preparations, okay? Then uh, you'll need to have some truffle oil, either white or black. This is white truffle oil, which I prefer. Then you'll need to have some uh, chives. And uh, let's see, how many chives do we need? Uh, we'll need about two tablespoons of uh, freshly chopped chives. Now I have more than that in here because we're gonna use them for a couple of different dishes. Then you'll need to have some uh, herbs de Provence, okay? This is a mixture of herbs. It's okay if you buy it uh, in dried form because it contains uh, fennel, which is actually, I think, better dried, and it has rosemary, which is good dried, also has lavender and savory and thyme in it, okay? So you need about two tablespoons of herbs de Provence. Then you'll need about a, have about a half of a teaspoon of sugar and about a quarter of a cup of either uh, dry vermouth or white wine. We're going to use vermouth today. You also need to have some smoked salt. And then uh, for the duck that you'll need for the smoking, you'll need about one half of a duck breast. Now, all the duck that I'm going to need for all the preparations is on this plate. Over here, I have a half of a duck breast that I have uh, sliced on the bias into about six strips that are the width of the duck and uh, the thickness of the duck, and they're mm, probably about two inches long. Just depends on how big the duck breast is that you have. Okay, that's all of the ingredients that we need for the shirred duck and uh, uh, shirred duck eggs and the smoked duck. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the ingredients for the next preparation. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about the truffle is that it should be sliced paper thin. So if you buy a, a fresh truffle, truffle, slice it paper thin, uh, and uh, the reason that I bought this brand is this Carpaccio is because it's already sliced paper thin. Okay, now let's talk about the ingredients for the duck consommé and the foie gras wontons. That's duck foie gras. Okay, we're going to need a batch of pasta. We're actually going to need two batches of pasta. I made those yesterday. I have them here wrapped in a damp towel and um, covered up so they don't dry out in the fridge. Okay, so one batch of pasta from the Pasta Master Recipe. Uh, we'll need, also need to have uh, one duck breast that has had the skin removed. And, and by the way, for that, that uh, last preparation, the uh, smoked duck, the skin should be removed from that duck breast too. Okay, so for this preparation, we're going to need one uh, whole duck breast that has had the skin removed, and then you coarsely chop that breast, okay, because we're going to process it to make the clarification for the consommé. I'll, I'll put this away. Uh, then we'll also need to have... Um, uh, six cups of duck stock. Camera cut out there for a moment. Um, we need to have six cups of duck stock. Now I already made that uh, and uh, there's a bonus lesson on making duck stock. So you'll need to make that in advance. You'll need to have six cups of duck stock. Then you'll need to have uh, the ingredients to make the clarification. In, in addition to that whole duck breast that you've chopped up, we're going to need to have two onions that you've peeled and coarsely chopped two carrots that you've peeled and coarsely chopped, about two stalks of celery, this is about two stalks worth that you have coarsely chopped. Then you'll need to have one small to medium onion that you've peeled, cut in half, and then charred the cut sides. We did that in a prior lesson uh, for making, actually there's, uh, we did that in making consomme. And so, and I believe that was the uh, uh, chickeny noodles lesson, okay? so. You'll, you'll char that uh, as you did before in a cast iron pan with just a little bit of oil. You want it to get it almost blackened on those two cut faces. Then you'll need to have uh, four egg whites. Now I haven't separated the eggs yet, but you'll need to have four egg whites uh, that have been lightly beaten. Keep the yolks, make something else like an omelet. Uh, then you'll need to have a bouquet garni. Now I'm tempted not to tell you the ingredients of a bouquet garni because uh, this is the last lesson and you, you know that uh, by now. But I will tell you anyway, it's black peppercorns, about a tablespoon. Uh, it's uh, one or two bay leaves that have been crushed, some parsley stems or parsley, and you'll need some fresh thyme, which I forgot to get out of the garden. Uh, then you'll also need to have a, about one tablespoon of white vinegar and some ground white pepper, and then about one tablespoon of chives. Uh, and then to make those uh, duck wontons, I already mentioned the pasta, but we're gonna need to about, have about four to five ounces of uh, foie gras. Uh, this is still vacuum sealed, okay? Uh, but it's thawed uh, out to room temperature. Uh, you'll need to have about two tablespoons of some kind of a duck spread. I'm, I'm sorry, not duck, fig spread, okay? Something thick that's um, uh, 
made with figs, okay? Then you'll need to have uh, about a quarter of a cup of Armagnac, and then about two tablespoons of Calvados, which is a uh, apple flavored liqueur. And then you'll need to have some shallots, um, and uh, these are for the wontons. You'll need to have about one tablespoon of uh, finely chopped shallots for the wontons, about one teaspoon of finely chopped carrots for the wontons. I have them in here with the um, uh, ingredients I'm gonna need for the ravioli as well. I'm just gonna eyeball how much uh, I need when I get to it. And then you'll need to have about one teaspoon of chopped celery, and that will be for the wontons also. Okay, that is all of the ingredients that we need uh, for this preparation. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the ingredients for the next preparation. One thing I forgot to mention again is that you need some extra flour for making those wontons, okay? Okay, let's talk about the ingredients for the duck ravioli. You're gonna to need to have one duck breast, skin removed, and sliced into about eight slices, right? Then, you're also gonna to need to have another batch of pasta. I talked about that earlier, already made the pasta. It's wrapped up in here. We keep it refrigerated for now. Then, we'll need to have about a quarter of a cup of cognac, and we'll need to have a one tablespoon of chopped shallots. Remember, I have them all here in the same one. We're gonna just eyeball what we need when we get to it. We need to have about two teaspoons of chopped carrots, one clove of chopped garlic, two prosciutto slices that have been chopped up, and I have them in this container here. Then we'll need to have about one tablespoon of the truffle, sliced truffle skin. I'm gonna use the same truffle carpaccio that I talked about before for the other preparation, about one tablespoon of that. Then we'll need to have about a quarter of a cup of uh, clarified butter that's been melted. Remember, I have more of that in here. We're just gonna use what we need as we need it. Then we'll also need to have some uh, truffle oil, white or black, about two tablespoons of green peas. They can be frozen that have been thawed. We need to have some uh, pimenta de espelette. This is a red pepper blend uh, uh, from, uh, from France, and uh, you can get it on the internet. Uh, I couldn't find it anywhere else. Then you need to have about one teaspoon of freshly chopped parsley. Got a lot more than that in here. We'll just take what we need. Some, uh, some fleur de sel. Fleur de sel is uh, a uh, fleur de sel is a uh, sea salt from the coast of France. Then you'll need to also have some uh, some cornmeal for making the raviolis. Okay, that is all of the ingredients we need for the duck ravioli. We'll break, come back, and I'll show you the ingredients for the fifth preparation in all your ducks in a row. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients for the fifth of the five preparations in all your ducks in a row. This is the seared duck breast with duck demi glace. All right, you're going to need to have two duck breasts that have been scored. This is how we did it in the duck breast master recipe. You want to score the skin about every half to three quarters of an inch and uh, do not cut into the meat below. Just score the, the skin itself. Two duck breasts that have been scored. Okay, in addition to that, we're going to need to have um, about a cup of broccoli flour. So we're not going to use the whole broccoli stem. We're just going to use the tops. And we're going to cut them down the middle. We're going to cut them down the middle so that we have a nice flat edge. Okay? All right? And then we'll need to have um, about, uh, let's see, two cups of um, duck stock, okay? We needed six cups for the consomme. We're gonna need two more cups here. Remember, there's a bonus lesson on how to make duck stock. Then we're gonna need to have about two tablespoons of demi glace. There's a separate lesson on making demi glace. And you gotta plan ahead, because making demi glace takes about three days, okay? And so we're gonna need about two tablespoons of demi glace. Okay, that is all of the ingredients that we need for all of the preparations for all your ducks in a row. I'll break now, come back, and show you the equipment we'll need for this final set of lessons. Okay, let's talk about equipment. We're gonna need a cutting board. We're gonna need a chef's knife. We're also gonna need to have a slicing knife. I'm using my Aratsugu knives today. We'll also need to have a boning knife or filleting knife. A uh, juicer so we can squeeze lemon on the apple if you're not gonna make the apple a la minute. Need to have a peeler, uh, an egg topper. We've used this in a prior lesson. I will also need to have ravioli cutters. I'm gonna have a large square ravioli cutter to make the wontons, 
and then a somewhat smaller uh, round ravioli cutter. This is the one that we've used in the ravioli master recipe and other ravioli preparations. We need to have a brush to make the ravioli, some kitchen string. Uh, we'll need to have um, some small and medium saucepans. Okay, this medium, I've got the uh, clarified butter is already in the small one. All right, then we'll need to have all the equipment that you need to make pasta. So you need a pasta maker and a uh, pastry knife, all the stuff that we usually use to make pasta. Uh, then um, we're going to need to have the uh, sous vide device. Now, we already have the duck cooking in the sous vide device. And so it's whatever sous vide de device you have, okay? You, 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 you'll, you'll need that set up. Then we'll need to have a, a food processor and a whisk. We're gonna use this to make the clarification. You'll need to have a wooden spoon. You'll probably use that several times. Uh, then we'll also need to have, um, we'll also need to have uh, some mixing bowls, various sizes, small, medium, um, and a couple of sizzle plates. And you'll need to have one large mixing bowl uh, to make an ice bath, okay? Then uh, we'll need to have a ladle to ladle the consomme out after it's finished uh, cooking uh, with the clarification. Fine strainer to strain the consomme. And we'll need to have a fat separator. And then uh, we'll also need to have a uh, cardboard egg carton. Now we're going to use this to uh, make the shirred eggs. And it has to be a cardboard egg carton. Same reasons we've done this before. Uh, if you use a plastic egg carton, it'll melt in the oven. Uh, if you use a cardboard egg cor carton, it won't. You'll need to have a baking pan to put it in a water bath. You also need to have a pasta pot to make the pasta. You need to have a cast iron skillet and then another skillet. And then um, you'll also need to have a, uh, a Ziploc bag and optional bag filler so that you can um, uh, do marinade in this bag and then we'll need to have a smoker and wood chips for the smoker and then um, we'll also need to have one or two sheet pans and then we'll need to have some uh, bamboo skewers that have been soaked in water for at least an hour okay so these are like uh, six to eight inch long bamboo skewers uh, they've been soaking actually overnight but you need to soak them in water for at least an hour and then uh, finally, we're going to need to have something to serve each course. Now you're going to need plates for each one of the courses. And you'll just decide which plates you need. You'll, you'll probably want a bowl for the ravioli. But for the sheared eggs, you're going to need something like an egg cup. Now these are egg cups. And they're a little bit bigger, believe it or not. They're even bigger than a duck egg. I don't know what they were made for. But what we're going to do is put a little bit of uh, salt in the bottom of these to raise up the bottom a little bit, and then we're going to put the eggs in these cups for service. So you need one something that can serve as an egg cup uh, for six people. Now, it doesn't have to be an egg cup. It can just be a little bowl, put some uh, kosher salt in it, sit the egg on top of that so it stays, stays, steady, stays steady and is sitting upright. Okay, that's all of the equipment that we need for all your ducks in a row. We'll break, come back, and start cooking. Okay, now we already have our sous vide set up heated to 176 degrees to cook the, uh, the, the duck confit pouches. Now we're gonna take the pouch which has uh, the duck and the thyme and the duck fat. Uh, it's been uh, in the refrigerator overnight and we're going to put the pouch into the water and we're going to cook the pouch for eight to nine hours. And for timing purposes, uh, since this is a very complicated series of lessons, uh, I'm putting them in at 9.45 in the morning, plan to take them out between 6 and 7 p.m. Uh, and I'll be serving um, the five courses between roughly 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Okay, now we're gonna make the clarification for the duck consomme. I already have the uh, mirepoix, which is the onions and the carrots here in the food processor. And now I'm gonna add the uh, duck breast that's been coarsely chopped, all right? And then we're going to process that until it's smooth and kind of granular. We did this in, a, in an earlier lesson. All right, let's see how it looks. Oh, beautiful. Okay, we have a nice processed mixture there. See that? Okay, now we're going to put that into the stock pot. Okay, we have the clarification already in the bottom of the stock pot. We're going to add about a tablespoon 
of white vinegar, okay? And then we're gonna whisk the egg whites into the mirepoix and um, duck mixture, which is gonna become the clarification. Okay, whisk those together. Now we want to pour the cold stock into the clarification and stir it up gently. Okay, now we want to add the bouquet garni, which is always fresh thyme, parsley or parsley stems, one or two bay leaves broken up, and about a tablespoon of black peppercorns. Now, these could all be wrapped up in uh, some uh, cheesecloth in like a little bag, but there really isn't any need to do that because uh, this is all going to get strained out later. Then we want to add our onion brulee which is the charred on onion, so we charred the faces of this onion earlier, okay? Add that. Ready? Okay, add that in there. Then we want to add uh, light salt. And a little bit of white ground pepper. Stir that up. Now we want to bring this just to a boil. Now it's just like we've done in uh, some other lessons. We don't want it to be come to a rolling boil. We want it to just, just start to get some bubbles. Then we're going to reduce the heat and simmer it. So we want to just heat it up. Mm, this is like um, a little bit less than medium heat. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't come to a rolling boil. Okay, so our raft is starting to rise to the top. We're getting some bubbles around the edges. So I'm going to turn the heat down. And um, after your raft, uh, so, so the raft is, uh, is rising around the edges and it's forming into a raft. The part in the center is still liquidy, okay? Once that forms into a solid raft, uh, punch a hole in it, make a hole in it, okay? And um, I'll try to show you that when, when we get to that point. Uh, but for now, we're gonna reduce the heat and let it simmer for an hour. All right, now one thing I should tell you about all your ducks in a row is we're not going to do the steps for one lesson, then the next lesson, then the next lesson, then the next. We're gonna do them all at once, okay? This is how you would do it, and this is how you will do it if you're gonna serve all of these courses in one evening, all right? So we're gonna be jumping around. Right now we're gonna work on the, um, the foie gras for the foie gras wontons. Okay, so first we're gonna salt, season, season the uh, wontons with salt and pepper. And uh, you know I like to pat it in, all right? Both sides. Then we're gonna poach the, uh, the foie gras. Now I'm only using about half of what you would be using if you're making for the number of people in the description. All right, now we're gonna poach the uh, foie gras. And um, we have in this pan, uh, it's a small saucepan, we have uh, one tablespoon, about one tablespoon of shallots, about one teaspoon of carrots, about one teaspoon of celery. We have about a quarter cup of Armagnac and about two tablespoons of Calvados. All right, now what we're gonna do is add the foie gras, all right? Then we're going to put it on medium heat and let it poach for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn it over one time about halfway through, okay? So what we're gonna do first is bring it to, just bring it to a boil, then we're gonna turn it down to simmer and let it poach for 10 minutes, turning once. All right, we're getting some boiling bubbles in here, so we're gonna turn down the heat to simmer it. We're gonna let it simmer for five minutes, turn it, let it simmer for five minutes more. Okay, it's been five minutes. We're just gonna turn these little babies over and let them poach for five more minutes on uh, this side. Okay, now we're ready to uh, process 
uh, the foie gras. But I'm going to pour off a little bit of this liquid. Um, I want there to be a little bit less liquid in volume than there is foie gras. Right now I think there is more liquid than there is foie gras. So we're just going to pour off a little bit of the liquid. So we have about the same amount of liquid, maybe a little bit less liquid than we have foie gras. Okay, now we're going to put this into the food processor. And we're going to process it until it is smooth. Okay, here's our processed foie gras mixture. Um, it's a little bit uh, watery, a little bit watery than I want, but I think once we put it in the fridge, it'll firm up because the fat in there will solidify. So we're going to chill this now until it's firm. Now we're going to do the duck breast for the ravioli. Okay, so this is one duck breast. It's had the skin removed. It's been sliced into about uh, eight pieces. Okay, so we're going to lightly season the uh, these sliced pieces. Okay, and pat it in. All right, now we're going to poach the duck breast. So in this um, small saucepan, uh, we have uh, about one tablespoon of shallots, about two teaspoons of carrots, one clove of garlic that's been chopped, about a quarter cup of cognac, and now we're going to add the duck pieces, okay, and spread them out in there so that they're not all on top of each other. Kind of get them all onto the bottom of the pan, all right, and then. We want to add enough water to cover. All right, adding enough water to cover. All right, now what we're going to do is put this on medium heat, bring it just to a boil, and when we get to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat and uh, let it simmer until the. Um, there we go. Let it simmer until the liquid has reduced by about half. Alright, so we're just coming to a boil. We're going to reduce the heat to simmer. And we're going to let that cook and poach, poaching the duck, until the liquid has reduced by about half. Alright, here's our um, uh, poaching duck that has where the liquid's reduced by about half. We're now going to strain out the liquid. All right. And then we're going to transfer the duck and the mirepoix into the food processor and use a little bit of the liquid. All right, we already have in the food processor um, the prosciutto and the truffle. I think this preparation called for about a tablespoon of the truffle slices. And um, we're going to add to that the duck out of the strainer. And, then, <laughs> and we're also going to add to that the um, mirepoix that uh, is still in the in the saucepan. All right. And then we're going to add about a tablespoon of the, um, the reduction, okay? All right, now we're going to process this until it's smooth. All right, let's check it out. Now what we're going for is kind of a, a paste, okay? Now if it's, too, if it's too granular, it's not holding together, add a little bit more of the liquid till it starts to hold together like a paste. And we're getting a nice paste consistency here, okay? What we want is something that can hold together that we can use as a ravioli filling. All right, now next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, transfer this to a bowl and chill it until it is firm. Okay, so um, our Consomme has been um, simmering for about an hour. We're going to try to get as much of this out through the hole in the center of the raft as we can, and then we're going to strain it. Okay, this, uh, this is the bowl that I used to put the stock into the um, stock pot. Looks like we lost about mm, half a cup uh, in the in evaporation while we were making the consomme. Now we're going to strain this into a clean pot and reduce it. 
Okay, I have a saucepan here on the stove. I have a fine mesh strainer, and I'm just going to strain the consomme into this clean pot. Right now we have a beautiful golden color to our uh, consomme. But what we're going to do is reduce that by half, uh, which will concentrate the flavor. So I'm putting it on medium heat, bringing it to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit so it uh, reduces uh, gently, uh, not on a rolling boil. And we're going to reduce this by about half. Now we started out with six cups. Um, we lost a little bit in the... Um, uh, in evaporation. So we're probably going to wind up with about uh, two and a half cups after we reduce it. The next thing on our prep list is to adjust the seasoning of the consomme. See how it tastes. Mmm. Very ducky. Just need to give it a little bit of salt. I'm going to give it just a tiny hint of pepper. Stir that up. And taste it again. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, now we want to keep this warm until we're ready to plate. All right, now we're going to make the foie gras and fig wontons. I've taken out one of my batches of pasta and I've dusted it in flour. I've dusted the work surface in flour and I've also dusted uh, half of the sheet pan in flour. I might only need one sheet pan to do both the raviolis and the um, camera cut off again. I might only need one sheet pan to do both the raviolis and the wontons. We'll see. Anyway, what we're going to do now is roll this out on setting number one, and we're going to roll it until we get to setting number six. Okay, now we have, here's our foie gras mixture. It's, it got nice and firm in the fridge. I stirred it up some to mix in any of the fat that was around the edges, and I've got a nice mixture there. Now, uh, we're gonna make, well, if you're making for the number of people in the description, we're gonna make 12 wontons. Now, I'm not gonna make that many because I didn't make as much, okay? So, what I wanna do is I wanna take my pasta cutter, right, and I want to put, and this is a square pasta cutter, I wanna put the, um, foie gras mixture into what would be the corner of that pasta cutter because what we're going to do after we cut this is we're going to fold it over on itself okay so we want to have just a little bit less than I have here and then we want to add a little bit of the fig spread just a little bit just a touch okay now we want to cut that piece of pasta with the, with the um, with the foie gras mixture in the corner, not not right at the corner, because after you fold it over, you're gonna need to have the edges meet, okay, so you can make a ravioli. All right, so cut it with your cutter. Make sure all the sides have released, okay? And then, we're gonna brush it with just a little bit of water Okay, then fold the ravioli over onto itself, okay? And so these are, I'm calling these wontons, but it's really, it's the same thing as making ravioli, okay? Then press the edges together. All right, there we go. That's one of the raviolis. We're gonna make as many of those as we can with the amount of mixture that we have. Then we're just gonna put them on the floured sheet pan. All right, later we're gonna to toast, uh, toss them in a little bit more flour.
Okay, here are our finished wontons. We actually got 12 out of that amount as it was. So you may have some leftover um, mixture that you could use either to make more of these, make regular ravioli, or make something else. And I've dusted them in some flour. Now, since we're not gonna be cooking these for a couple hours, uh, I'm gonna cover them, put them in the fridge. All right, now we're gonna make our raviolis, and we're gonna do it the same, roll out the pasta the same way we rolled it out for the, um, uh, for the wontons. I've floured the pasta, I've floured the work surface, and I'm just thinning it out a little bit. And then we're gonna run it through the machine to number six. All right, now we wanna use our duck mixture, which is firmed up nicely in the fridge. And we wanna make 12 to 16 raviolis. Okay, here are ravioli. I managed to get 21 ravioli out of that filling. And um, you might ask, well, why did we scatter the, or dust the uh, wontons in flour and the ravioli in um, cornmeal? Uh, it's, it's partly personal preference. I think the uh, cornmeal is better if they're going to sit longer before you cook them. Flour is better if you're gonna cook them pretty soon after you make them. Um, now these aren't gonna be made for a few hours. I mean, uh, cooked for a couple hours now. So I'm gonna cover these and put them in the fridge. All right, now we're going to marinate the duck that we're going to smoke, okay? So this is the other duck breast that we sliced into pieces, and we're going to um, prick it with a fork so that the marinade can penetrate the meat, okay? And then we're gonna marinate it. All right, so we're just gonna prick it on both sides with a fork. Okay, now here we have a small bowl uh, that we're going to use for the marinating. We have in the bowl already uh, one tablespoon of herbs de Provence. Uh, we have uh, half of a teaspoon of uh, sugar. And we're going to add the duck, right? Then we're going to add some white wine or vermouth, about a quarter of a cup. Basically, we want to have uh, enough to get it all um, covered, okay? And then we're, what we're going to do is mix that up make sure it's all covered. Now what you can do at this point is you can either leave it in this bowl and cover it, uh, put it in the fridge and let it marinate for one to two hours, or you can put it into your Ziploc bag and do the same thing. I'm just going to cover it, leave it in this bowl and put it into the fridge to marinate for one to two hours. Well, just check the prep list and realize that we didn't do the seasoning, okay? So we want to add some salt and pepper to this, uh, these slices of duck, all right? And then some smoked salt, all right? Just lightly. Okay, then we just want to mix that up. Make sure it's all submerged. Cover it and marinate that in the fridge for one to two hours. All right, now we're gonna start making the duck demi-glace for the um, uh, seared duck that is the last course. Uh, we have in here two cups of duck stock. We're gonna bring that to a boil on medium high heat. And uh, then we're, once it gets to boiling, we're going to adjust the heat so it's not in a rolling boil, but just a kind of a gentle boil and we're gonna reduce it to two tablespoons. All right, now we wanna heat the oven to 375 degrees. This is the temperature that we're gonna be using to finish the duck after it's been seared. Now is also the time to heat your smoker to 250 degrees. 
All right, now we're going to prepare the eggs. Now, we're going to use the topper to top each egg. But these, this topper is actually made for chicken eggs, not for duck eggs. And the duck eggs are larger, so it's not making a large enough hole. So what we're going to do after we top it is take our kitchen shears and carefully cut off about, oh, an eighth of an inch around the rim to make a bigger hole. Basically, we want to make a hole big enough that the um, egg yolk can slide through um, without breaking. And so we're going to cut all the way around. You might notice that I'm turning the carton rather than turning the egg, uh, which is uh, a bit easier. And then we want to get that shell out of there and trim it. If it, if, it, if it doesn't look nice, you know, you want to trim it a little bit more. And then what we want to do is pour that egg out of the shell into a small bowl without breaking the yolk. All right. Then we want to rinse this out and drain it. Okay, now we want to take some uh, of your clarified butter, which we have melted already, right? And we're going to brush the inside of the eggshell. And then also while, the, while we're doing this, if there's any little pieces of shell that are hanging on the edge, we want to get those off, okay? So we have a kind of a nicer look to the edge of the shell, all right? Then we want to spoon away two or three teaspoons, you can use a regular teaspoon, of this yolk, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the white. You, if you can either get rid of it if you want or you can mix it with the yolks that you had left over for making the clarification. You have a mixture of duck whites and chicken yolks, no, no problem, you could use that to make an omelet or any other use of an egg. So I'm gonna spoon out about two, three teaspoons of this because we're gonna pour this back into the egg and now that we've cut away part of the eggshell, we have too much egg, right? It's going to overflow. We also want it to be a little bit below the rim. So I'm going to spoon away about two or three teaspoons. This is just a regular teaspoon. Okay, now we want to carefully pour the egg back into the shell without breaking the yolk. If you break the yolk, make another one, all right? Okay, now what you want to do this, and so now that it's in there, um, I'd say the egg is probably about a quarter of an inch below the rim, and uh, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more at the edge here. All right, now you want to do this with each one of your eggs, for whatever number of people you're serving, and I recommend that you do one or two extras. So again, what you're going to do is top the egg, then you're going to trim away more of the eggshell, you're going to empty the egg into a little bowl without breaking the yolk, then you're going to rinse out the egg, drain it, then you're going to brush the inside of the uh, shell with clarified butter, then you're going to spoon away two to three teaspoons of the white and uh, from, the, from the bowl, right, and then you're going to pour the egg carefully back into the shell without breaking the yolk, and you're going to do that for all of your eggs. All right, our stock is almost reduced down to two tablespoons. While that's finishing, we're going to bring the water to a boil uh, that we're going to use to cook the wontons and the raviolis. And this, remember, I like to do things like, I like to do ravioli and these wontons in a wide shallow pan. It's much gentler on them, it's easier to fish them out. And I've added some kosher salt. We want the water to be salty, kind of like the ocean, okay? If it hasn't dissolved right now, it'll dissolve a little bit later after it uh, heats up. All right, now I would say that our, um, our stock is down to about two tablespoons. Now, we're going to um, add the demi -gloss. Okay, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of demi -gloss. This was in the freezer earlier, so it's still a little bit frozen. We're gonna add about two tablespoons, all right? All right, now that will melt. Uh, in the uh, in the hot stock. Okay, we're going to stir that up till it's till it's till the um, demi glace is melted and it's well mixed. Have it now down on uh, just on low heat. Okay, now we're going to taste it. Oh, very nice. Now now would be the time to adjust the seasoning. 
but I think it's perfect, doesn't need any more salt or pepper, so we're gonna leave it just the way it is, and we're gonna keep it warm until we're ready to plate. All right, now we're going to skewer our strips and smoke them, all right, so we're gonna take the strips of duck that we've had marinating and just run the skewer through them so it's uh, kind of long on the skewer, right, okay? And shake off any excess, brush off some of that herbs de Provence if it's on there too thickly, okay? And then we're gonna put them into whatever pan you're gonna to use to put them into your smoker. Okay, here they are in the pan that we're gonna use for the smoking. Uh, and what we're going to do now is I put them into the smoker. So I always put things into the smoker first, then I put in the wood chips. And we're going to let them smoke for 20 to 30 minutes until they lose their color. Okay? Into the smoker. Okay, now we're going to salt and pepper each one of the eggs that we're making. We're just slightly salting on top and then light pepper. Now you might say, well, why didn't we do this before when we were doing the eggs, when we were topping the eggs? I like to do it closer to the time it will be cooking, okay? Now, we want to place the carton into the water bath, okay? So here I have the baking pan. It's been filled up about three quarters of the way with water. And we're gonna put the, um, the egg carton in there. Now the egg carton is gonna, right now it's kind of floating a little bit, but it's going to absorb water and then it will um, sink to the bottom. And then we want to cover the eggs with the other part of the egg carton, okay? And then we want to put this into the oven and bake until the eggs are just set, which is going to be about 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, here's our sous vide bag. It's been in the sous vide device for, uh, well, Mm, since we put it in, which was about 9.45 in the morning, it's now about 6.15, okay? And now what we want to do is open up the bag and remove the duck without spilling the juices. And put that onto this sizzle plate here. I'm going to get rid of the thyme. This is kind of hot, okay? I'm going to get, uh, get some tongs. Okay, now I want to pour those juices into the fat separator. Okay, now I was going to show you removing the meat from the bones, but I thought it was recording and it wasn't. So what you want to do is take your leg and thigh, remove the skin, you can keep that skin for making uh, duck cracklings, and then use a fork and just pull all of the meat from the bones till you have a little pile like this. I'm gonna keep these bones to make uh, anything ramen broth or duck stock. Now what you wanna do is keep this meat warm until you are ready to plate up. Now I realized that the um, there wasn't enough essence uh, to work with the, with the fat separator. So what we're gonna do is we're going to spoon off the fat from the top of the um, the top layer is the fat, okay? So we're, we put it into a bowl and we're gonna spoon out the fat without trying to get the essence. Now, how can you tell the difference? The fat is clear. The essence has, uh, you know, basically duck fond in it. So we're gonna try to get as much of the fat off of it as we can. Okay, now I think we've gotten most of the fat off. What I'm getting now in the spoon is mostly fond, okay? So what I want to do is I want to keep that warm. This I want to keep this warm also until we're ready to toss the duck in it. All right, now we're going to get ready to plate the first course, okay? So we're going to take a little bit of the killer cherry sauce and put it into a little bowl. You could put it in a dollop on the side of the plate if you like. This is a small plate, remember, so we don't need to put a lot in the bowl. All right, then we want to put, in a, put down a small bed of arugula. Now 
Now we want to toss the duck with some of our uh, diced apple, and you know we don't want to overwhelm the duck, so we want to use a you know a nice amount that is a nice uh, balance, okay, between the duck and the apple. We'll just add a little bit more there, okay. Now we're going to keep this warm until we're ready to plate, but we're going to plate right now. Okay, time to plate up. We're going to take a little mound of the duck and apple mixture and put that on each plate. Remember, you're going to have to divide this up among the number of people that you have, right? I didn't make as much tonight. If you had made the uh, full amount that's on the description, you'll have enough for uh, the number of guests that's in the description. Okay, now we want to uh, spoon a little bit of the essence over the mixture of duck and apple. Then a twist of pepper, red peppercorns. And then just a few grains of salt. Okay, there we have it. That's the first dish. That is the uh, duck confit with apples arugula and killer cherry sauce. Okay, here is our uh, smoked duck pieces, uh, skewers. We're going to um, take them out of the pan and then We're going to toss them in just a little bit of olive oil. I want to get them coated so they look shiny. They, when you, they come out of the smoker, they look kind of dry, okay? So we just want to get kind of a shininess on them with the oil. And then we want to just keep these warm until we are ready to plate. Okay, now our eggs, I believe, are set. You can put a little toothpick in there and you can feel that they're set, okay? And what we want to do is keep these warm until we're ready to plate. Okay, now we're gonna plate up the next course, which is the shared eggs and the smoked duck. All right, so we have the eggs in an egg cup. They're sitting on a little kosher salt, so they are stable in there. And then we're gonna add some uh, truffle slices. This is the truffle carpaccio, right? And uh, you just wanna add a nice amount on there so it's generous, okay? And uh, the eggs are set. They took about 30 minutes to set. Add a little bit more truffle. Okay. Then we're going to add a little bit of truffle oil. Why are we doing that? Because if you're not using fresh truffles, sometimes you don't get as much truffle taste or smell as you would like, all right? So we're just gonna add a couple of drops of truffle oil. I'm using white truffle oil, which I prefer. Then we're gonna dust with a few chives. They can go on the plate too. Makes the plate look better. Then we're going to put just a couple of grains of salt on the top. Just a twist of pepper on the top. And then we're going to add a smoked duck skewer, okay? All right. That is our second course, which is shirred duck eggs with truffles and smoked duck skewers. All right, now we want to get our consomme to be piping hot, okay? And I'm going to keep it covered so we don't ev evaporate uh, much of it. Then we're going to cook our wontons about one to two minutes. We're going to do two per person. You know, I'm not sure that this was in the photo when I, in the image, when I started to uh, record, but basically these wontons have been in this water for about one one hour, 40, one minute, 45 seconds, something like that. We're going to take them out, all right? Keep them warm until we're ready to plate, which is as soon as the uh, consomme is piping hot. Okay, let's plate up our consomme. Just put a ladle in each bowl. 
It should be clear and golden, and it should smell very ducky. Okay, and again, you're going to have to divide this up among the number of people that you have. All right, now let's add the wontons, two wontons per guest. And garnish with some chives from on high. Okay, that is the third course. That is duck consommé with duck foie gras and fig wontons. Okay, now we want to bring our peas to a boil in some salted water. All right. All right, our peas are almost to a boil, so we're going to add the uh, raviolis to the boiling water. They're going to cook one to two minutes just like the wontons. All right, our peas are boiling. We're going to turn the heat off and we're going to get the peas out of the water and put them into an ice bath. Okay, let's remove our ravioli. It's been just about two minutes. Now we're going to keep these warm until we're ready to plate, but we're going to be plating right now. All right now, let's warm the peas back up. The water's still warm, but the heat is off. Okay, we're gonna um, let those sit in there for just a moment. Then we're gonna strain them into a bowl and keep them warm until we're ready to plate. Okay, let's plate up. We're gonna do two or three raviolis per person, depending on how many you uh, made and also how hungry your guests may be. And then we're going to uh, drizzle them with a little bit of, uh, well, first, first let's put in the peas. So first we're gonna garnish with the peas. Then we're gonna drizzle with a little clarified butter. Then a few drops of truffle oil. Then just a little sprinkling of the piment de espelette. This is for color and a little kick. Then a little parsley from on high. Then a few grains of fleur de sel. And then just a little twist of black pepper. And there we have it. That's the lobster ravioli with uh, peas and truffle oil. Okay, we're starting, we're finishing the last course. Here we have our two duck breasts where we um, scored the skin, all right? And they've been brought to room temperature. And now we're going to season them with salt and pepper on both sides. All right, now we're gonna sear the duck breast. We start with skin side down in a hot, dry pan. Why dry? Because the duck has all the fat that it needs, okay? So we're gonna put these duck breasts skin side down in the pan, and we're gonna let them cook uh, seven to eight minutes. Now I'm using a splatter guard on the duck, and while the duck is searing, we're going to cook the broccoli um, flowers. Now I'm going to start with them cut side down as much as I can. We're going to season them and what we want is we want them to get kind of charred. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Oh, we're getting a nice char on the uh, cut side. Okay, now what we're going to do is take these out of the pan and then we're going to 
toss them in a little bit of olive oil. Just a little. Back into the pan. Now why did we do that? We did that because we're going to get some charring on the flat side because the flat side is coming into contact with the pan which has been lightly oiled. But the flour side, that's, that's, that's um, very dry and uh, it may just burn in a way that you don't want unless you put a little oil on them before you turn them over. Okay, our duck's been cooking seven to eight minutes. We're going to turn it over, turn them over and cook them two minutes on the other side. Meanwhile, we're getting a nice char on our broccoli flowers. All right, we're going to let them go a little bit more, take them off the heat, keep them warm. Okay, our broccoli's looking good. Let's take them off the heat. We're going to keep these warm until we are ready to plate. That's two minutes on the... Uh, other side of the duck. Now we're going to take this, put it in the oven, and finish it in the oven for six to seven minutes, 375 degrees. Okay, here's our duck. It's been finishing in the oven for uh, six to seven minutes. We're now going to let it rest for about mm, three, four minutes, something like that, okay, in a warm spot. Okay, now we're going to take our duck breast and we're going to slice it basically where we have the, um, the scores in the, in, the, um, in the skin, all right? And now, depending on how many you're serving, remember, you're going to have to slice enough so you can have at least two pieces per guest. Okay, now I want to uh, take the larger slices and cut them on the diagonal, keep the pieces together. Okay, now we're going to um, place the uh, broccoli on the plate. Now we're going to arrange the duck two slices per person, but remember they've been cut in half per person. We want to drizzle with the duck demi gloss. A little pepper, a little salt, just a couple of chives, and there we have it, seared duck breast made according to the duck breast master recipe with duck demi-gloss. Okay, that's it. You can see photos of the final dishes at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, Cook Like a Pro. This is the end of the course. If you've cooked your way through this course, you can now cook like a pro. So keep on cooking. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.